everyone, I'm Aisha Dang. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel for yet another financial video. However, I promise you, this one is going to be fun. This video is all about the 30 things to do for fun for free, people. For free. Listen, being on a budget is is kind of sucky. It's not the most fun thing to do in the world. The end goal of being financially free and financially stable is amazing. Don't get me wrong, that's why we are all on this journey. But the journey can get and will get draining. It is really hard to balance your life when you're working so hard towards a financial goal. I mean, when I first started my financial journey, Brian and I would actually get into some mini arguments about it because I would never want to do anything. I would never want to leave the house because I didn't want to spend money. However, now um, it's been about like a year and a half and I found a nice little balance between work and play. But that still doesn't mean that I like to spend money on things, okay? So this video is all about things that you can do get you outside, get you smiling, get you laughing, um, but you don't have to spend a dime. I am once again partnering with Mint to show you that you can have a fun, amazing, bomb time with your life without feeling the pressure of having to spend money. Last week I shared with you Mint is giving away $5,000 to one lucky winner. Remember, share a photo of your hashtag MyMintBalance. How do you escape the stresses of daily life and how do you rejuvenate yourself without spending money? Do you cook a meal versus going out? Do you listen to podcasts versus going to the movies? Do you go to a dog park versus an amusement park? Or maybe you'll even find some awesome inspiration from the 30 suggestions on this list. So to enter, all you have to do is tag Mint on either Instagram or Twitter with the hashtag MyMintBalance and submit either a photo or video of you doing your Mint Balance. If you wanna enter on Instagram, the tag is at Mint App. If you wanna enter on Twitter, it's at Mint. I know $5,000 could be a game changer for each and every one of you. So I hope you enter, it is so easy. The contest ends on July 21st, so that is right around the corner. So submit your My Mint Balance ASAP before you forget because $5,000, it's the easiest $5,000 you will ever earn in your life. So I hope to see your submissions. I'm really looking forward to looking at the hashtags. And again, maybe you'll even find some inspiration in this video. So let's get to it. Remember, July 21st is when it ends, $5,000, don't sleep on it, and let's get to the video. Suggestion number one is to check out your local community calendar. Look at your city's website for a list of free events in your area. You would often be surprised about how many free things are happening in your area that you didn't even know about. Where I live in the downtown area, there is always something going on and I don't know it until I walk past it. So find your community calendar and see what's going on for this weekend or for the summer. All right, number two is to get involved in community sports. I personally don't do them, but my brother does and I have a couple of girlfriends and my cousin. They do like kickboxing, or not, not kickboxing, what do they, they call, they do um, like dodgeball, they do softball, they do soccer, I guess really anything with the ball. Sometimes there may be a fee involved with that, but I actually know people whose community sports are free and it's just like for fun and anyone can join. However, if there is a charge for yours and you still wanna get out and be active and do some sports, sometimes Brian will just go to our local like basketball court and pick up a game there. So we have the dog park and a basketball park right next to each other. I watch the boys in the dog park. Brian will play a pickup game for free and it's just like a, a really nice, uh, we normally go to the dog park on Sunday, so a really nice Sunday afternoon thing to do um, for free. Number three is to listen to podcasts. Podcasts are perhaps the best free entertainment out there. There are a wide variety of topics for you to listen to, sports, um, business, 
politics. For me, true crime is what I listen to. For some reason, I'm just like, a lo- I love true crime podcasts. It's kind of morbid of me, but Brian and I listen to uh, Crime Junkies all the time. And if you're looking for, you know, a nice fun podcast featuring yours truly, hit up Heavy Topics with Lightweights. We are hilarious. Number four is to host a game night. I'm not gonna lie, I used to think game nights were kind of corny until I stopped having money to like go out to the club or to the bar. And now I find them quite enjoyable. Someone you know has to have like a board game or even just a deck of cards lying around their home. Invite people over, tell them to bring whatever they have, set it up as a potluck, and this is like a really fun activity for you guys to do on a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday night. Similarly, number five is to have a film festival. Brian loves a movie theater. Like, it gets really expensive. Movies in general are just really expensive now, but add popcorn, add drinks, and I mean, I can even imagine if you had a family of four, you would be spending at least $100 on a two-hour movie. So instead of doing that, just Stay at home and watch a movie from there. Again, invite some friends over so it's a nice little party. Tell them to bring their favorite movie and just have a film festival. Number six is to set goals. Now, I'm a huge goal setter. You guys know this. Whether you're setting goals for the next three months or the next 10 years, I think setting a goal is a really good way to figure out what you want your life to look like in that amount of time and how you plan on getting there. In December, one of my girlfriends actually put together a vision board party and she brought magazines and glue and scissors and we brought, I used my planner as my vision board and she supplied food and drinks and it was actually a really fun, awesome thing. So figure out what you want out of life and if you want to make it a party, make it a party. Similarly, number seven is to set your budget. Can't be a financial video without me mentioning the budget at least once. I know many people don't view budgeting as a fun weekend activity. I get it, but many of you watching this video are concerned about your financial health, so let's get on it. If you're new to budgeting, I'll go ahead and link my budgeting 101 video up in the cards. And if you're a seasoned pro, let this be a reminder to you, it's almost time to budget for the next month, so prepare yourself. The next suggestion would be to visit a museum or an art gallery. As I get older, I'm really starting to understand the appeal of a museum. In Los Angeles, there is at least 100 museums or galleries, so go ahead, see what's around your neighborhood, give them a call, see when, if there is a fee of entry, see when their free admission day is because they always have one at least once a month and you can go then. Number nine is to Marie Kondo your life. Who knew, really, who knew purging your closet and folding your clothes into little bitty squares could be so relaxing. Similarly, number 10 is to rearrange your furniture. For me, I spend most of my money that isn't like a responsibility like the dogs on home decor. It's really bad. So if I want to kind of switch up my surroundings instead of going to home goods, I'll just rearrange my furniture. Um, And it's something my mom has done like since I can remember. And you would be surprised about how refreshed your space feels just by moving a chair from one area to another area or a painting from one wall to another wall. You can completely transform your room by not spending a dime. All right, number 11 might seem a little childish, but hear me out, it's to build a fort. I saw one of my girlfriends do this on Instagram and it seemed really fun, so Brian and I did it. I find that when you do things from your childhood, it actually makes you just like really warm and happy inside. So if you haven't built a fort in a long time, get to it. Another fun thing to do this weekend, either by yourself, with some friends, with your significant other, is to go to a bookstore. Go to a bookstore, explore, relax, find some inspiration, find some new books. You wouldn't necessarily think about going to a bookstore uh, for date night, but it's actually a really cute, relaxing place to have a fun, um, no spend evening. 13, sell your stuff. 
A weekend activity that will help you purge your home and make you money, I'm all about it. Turn your excess clutter into cash. And trust me, if you haven't decluttered your house or apartment in a long time, this could be a weekend long activity for you. So either put together a good old fashioned like garage sale or hit up Craigslist, hit up Facebook Marketplace, hit up Poshmark, any place you need to do to send to sell stuff that you don't really need in your house but is still good quality enough to sell, do it. Again, my go-to is Facebook Marketplace is actually what I've been doing most lately and then Poshmark for my clothes. 14 is to go on a hike. Take a friend or go by yourself, it doesn't matter to me. Just go outside and enjoy yourself. If you don't have a hike that's convenient to you, just maybe pick up a blanket, get a book and go to your local park and just lie there. We're at the halfway mark people. Number 15 is to pretend you're a tourist. Most people rarely visit tourist attractions in their area. I mean, I live in Los Angeles and I've never once been to the Hollywood sign. Never once. And um, Hollywood Boulevard is so chaotic, I tend to avoid it. However, this weekend, do those things. Take a weekend, be a tourist. Maybe you'll discover some parts of your community, your neighborhood, your city that you didn't even know was there. 16 is my favorite thing to do on the weekend and it is to go to the farmer's market. Even though I go for, you know, grocery shopping, the farmer's market to me is probably the happiest place on earth. It's not Disneyland, it's the Hollywood farmer's market. There's just, like this real positive energy out there. There's food, there's drinks, there's music, there's kids, there's dogs, there's happiness, there's smiling. Um, obviously, if you don't wanna spend money, just go and be around that environment and be around that energy. And also go ahead and sample some things. Also for me, I think it's really important because I do try to shop locally, especially for my protein. It's nice to meet the vendors, build a friendship, and um, they can hook you up in some way or another with uh, what they got. So number 17 is to volunteer. Organizations and nonprofits are always looking for volunteers. I would suggest figuring out what you're interested in, what your passions are, and um, find an organization that relates to that. My girlfriend, she actually likes to read to kids on the weekends, that's something she does. Beach cleanups is something that I think Brian and I are actually going to do later this month. So the list is endless. If you volunteer, let us know in the comment section what you do. All right, speaking of beaches, number 18 is to go to the beach or lake or water fountain. It doesn't matter to me, just really anything with the sound of water. Even if it's just for five minutes, just being around that relaxing sound of the ocean or the trickling of a fountain will calm you. And maybe for me, like I'm from Hawaii, so I just, for me, the beach represents like a tranquility. And I don't go to the beach in LA because it's like inconvenient and dirty. But what I will do is just walk around to, there's various parks around me with like lakes or body of wa bodies of water. So I like to go there instead. Number 19 is to watch the sunset. You could also watch the sunrise, but I frankly don't want to wake up early enough to see that. <laughs> Ooh, 20 is to go to your local community garden. If you've been following kind of our moving journey and my decorating journey, um, you might have guessed that I really like to surround myself with greenery. Um, it, like the beach, is something that I associate with tranquil and calmness. Some botanical gardens may have an admissions fee, but others like right down the street from me is the Rose Garden at USC. Those are free. 21 is something that I really do, do enjoy doing, but sometimes my schedule gets so hectic that I don't even leave my house sometimes, and that's um, to take a walk. I think a lot of us have lost the simplistic beauty of a walk because we walk to work, we walk to our car, we walk to appointments. Walking is something that is now associated with things we have to do versus something that we wanna do. So my mom is someone who loves to walk. Every morning she likes, or when she can, she likes to go to the beach and walk around the beach. That's it. 
I really like to get outside and walk. Now I have the dogs to do so, so I'm able to take them for a walk. Sometimes it's only for 15 minutes. Sometimes it's for an hour if I have the time, but just get off your butt. And similarly, it's a really great way to explore your neighborhood. I actually, when I travel, I like to just walk. I don't like to take an Uber or a taxi anywhere. If it's walkable within like, I don't know, when I go to New York, I can actually spend the entire day walking all up and down New York. So I don't know, it's just something I really enjoy doing. And then that way you can, again, really begin to appreciate your neighborhood or your surroundings and discover a place that maybe you didn't even realize was there. Number 22 is to take a nap and that is something that I actually may do after this video because this list is exhausting me. Not gonna lie, I take naps on weekdays. That is the benefit of working from home and making your own schedule. But let's face it, many of you, many of us are just lacking sleep in general. So it's okay to take a nap. Like for me, the best nap, maybe go for a walk in the morning on the weekend by like maybe one or two, take a nap where it's still sunny and maybe you find that spot where the sun hits you perfectly and you're just like in this warm cocoon of nappiness. It's the best. All right, 23 is so much fun and it is to do a minute to win it game. If you're not familiar, Minute to Win It is actually a game show that we watch on Netflix. And basically they take everyday items you have in your home like chopsticks and chapstick and turn it into a game, a timed game. You can either watch the show on Netflix, it used to be on NBC, but I don't think it's on there anymore, or just simply Pinterest minute to win it games and you'll find a like slew of options for you. My friend Mark, when Brian and I went to Houston for Christmas, actually did this as a Christmas party and it was the most fun thing that I think we've done ever. So again, it's really easy. Everything that um, you need for these types of mini games, you probably already have in your home or someone has in their home. So again, a nice fun thing to do with your friends, that's free. Hear me out on this one and it's because I live the life Number 24 is to teach yourself a magic trick. Now, this might be something you don't know about Brian, but he is obsessed with magic. It is very weird. But I am constantly being shown or taught card magic tricks. It's kind of weird, but it offers hours of entertainment. So go on to YouTube, Google card magic tricks, because as we already discussed, Someone you know has a deck of cards and teach yourself a trick and maybe you can showcase it, show it off at your next game night. All right, 25, we are almost at the end of this list guys. 25 is to meditate. Meditation is a great way to push out stress and bring in calmness. Knowing how to meditate effectively and doing it consistently can totally transform your life. I have some meditation exercises that my girlfriend actually sent to me that she uh, voiced and she does herself. YouTube meditation, there's probably podcasts about meditation, so Google it, you're surrounded by options for you. 26 is to work out. Go for a run, go for a jog, go for a hike. Just get, get outside and do some movement. I normally work out in a gym setting, but sometimes I like to switch it up and do something outside. So this weekend I'm going to do an outdoor booty bench workout. Also, classes. You guys know I'm a huge fan of classes, but they are expensive. Like SoulCycle, what is it, like $30, $40? No, that is so silly. However, if you do wanna try classes, most, actually all classes, whether it's Pilates, a HIIT workout, a spin workout, um, they'll offer free classes, whether it's the first class free or the first week free. So go ahead, find a class in your neighborhood if you're more of a class person and um, just sign up for your free trial. 27 is something that's actually pretty fun and it is to plan your next vacation. Planning a vacation is not only something that is surprisingly fun to do, but also something that is responsible for you to do. Think of some options for your next trip and start researching the specifics. So compare flight options, hotels, and different activities and restaurants that you might be interested in going to. Not only will this save you a ton of money in the long run, but now you can set yourself up for a financial goal and start to get excited about your hassle-free vacation. I mentioned this last week there's no better feeling 
than going on a vacation that uh, you don't have to worry about how you're gonna pay for it. 28 is to take a long bath. The only thing that these suggestions on this list will cost you is the time you may not otherwise grant yourself. Grab a glass or a bottle of wine, put some music on, get some bubbles going, and just sit there and enjoy yourself. 29 is to take online classes. Is there something that you've been wanting to learn? Luckily, these days we have a large variety of options in order for you to teach yourself or to learn those type of things. A new language, how to take photos, calligraphy is apparently very big these days. There are great classes that you can take online on YouTube or something like Skillshare. They offer a free 30-day trial, so you can go ahead and sign up for that. I did a 30-day trial for Skillshare and I wanted to learn how to um, edit video, like beyond what I've been doing here. And um, it was actually really cool. But remember, with that kind of stuff, remember to cancel your subscription before the 30 days are up so you're not like looped into a monthly subscription. All right, people, number 30, we've made it. Number 30 is to visit a friend. Remember those two-legged humanoids you see walking around when you put down your cell phone or close your laptop? Visit one this weekend. All right, people, that is my list of 30 free things you can do this weekend. Ah! I know that this was a long video, but I hope that this inspired you to maybe get out of your comfort zone, maybe explore sides of your city that you've never thought of going to, maybe just rediscover yourself by spending some alone time at a park. But this list, I mean, 30 is a lot of list options. It just goes to show you that there are so many options, so many opportunities to live your life without spending a dime. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have anything to add, please do so in the comment section. Remember, the $5,000 Mint giveaway, it ends next week, so get on it. And um, yeah, thank you so much for sticking around. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.